big numbers, and less QQ, more pew pew. These are the reasons you've chosen a DPS class. You could have been a tank, but they aren't at the top of the damage charts. And healing? <laughs> but let's be real. In higher ranked content, DPS is the hardest role to fill, not because of a lack of players, but because of how many bad players outnumber the good ones. I'm going to give you a few tips to help elevate you over the mediocre players, helping solidify your position in future groups. Tip number one, stay alive. And I know, I know, you're sitting there thinking, well, duh, why are you wasting my time? I assure you I'm not. You see, DPS players can get so fixated on being at the top of the damage charts that they don't pay attention to easily avoidable mechanics. At higher levels of play, simple mistakes are costly and most of the time deadly. You are completely worthless to your group if you're dead. Yeah, you're sitting at the top of the DPS chart for those 60 seconds, but with the overall damage done, you're below the healer. Not only is that pathetic, but it's going to keep you from being able to complete the higher level content. Since you have to move to stay alive, don't be discouraged by your DPS not being the same as that training dummy. Tip number two, know your rotation and hotkeys. Go to wowhead.com and search for your class and spec. It will show you the best rotation and skill priorities that will maximize your DPS. Set your bars so they are visible in your peripheral vision. The reason being, you shouldn't have to stare at your action bars in order to complete your rotation. Stick with the build, and over time you'll subconsciously be aware of what skills are coming off of cooldown. If you want to use an add-on to help you visually manage cooldowns and abilities better, then check out weak auras. This tip directly impacts tip 1. The less time you are staring at your action bars means more time you're observing what's on the battlefield and less time you're spending in the fire. Bonus tip for easy to reach hotkeys that I personally use. One through five on the number pad, Q, E, F, R. I also have a mouse with extra buttons and then to double those hotkeys, I utilize the shift key plus the same buttons. Everything is close together, requires very little reaching, and covers all of my abilities that I need. Tip number three, know your utility. Every DPS offers some kind of utility, whether it be certain buffs or crowd control abilities. Buffs shouldn't need an explanation. They improve every other player in the party in some way, shape, or form. Crowd control. This is what will really set you apart from the rest. And if you plan on pushing Mythic Plus dungeons, you need to know what your crowd control abilities are. Identifying the most dangerous mobs, which are typically certain casters, and removing them from the battle make the rest of the group easy to handle. You should have access to some type of stun, some type of spell interrupt in your arsenal. The mobs should be marked, that way you know which one is the most dangerous, and you should have a nameplay add-on to help identify when a mob is casting an interruptible spell. Speaking of interrupts, if you've made it this far, do me a solid and like this video. It literally takes one second and it really helps me out. If you want to give it a dislike, I feel like you would have done that by now, but whatever. Regardless, I appreciate you for watching this video. Tip four, positioning. Good positioning helps your survivability. Ideally, you want to position yourself behind the boss. If you're ranged, you wanna keep a little distance between your other party members. Obviously, that doesn't really apply to melee. Being behind the boss means you won't get hit by any frontal AOE attacks. Even though the boss is focusing on the tank, they will still use AOE abilities. If a boss is going to target a specific party member, then they will do a complete 180 while casting or preparing. These big visual cues, along with the in-game warnings, should make it easier to avoid attacks. Keep in mind that many abilities will create a ring around you and anybody inside of that ring will also take damage. This is the reasoning behind keeping some space between you and your other party members. 
As melee, since you don't have the luxury of keeping space, you need to pay extra attention to these abilities as you don't want to ignore them and then wipe out all the other melee DPS because you didn't step away from the boss. Tip 5. The Party Makeup This kind of works with positioning, but I wanted to mention it separately. If you're running mythics or raids, be aware of what party you are assigned to and what classes there are. Let's say that you are a mage and the rest of the DPS are melee. Then be aware of this. This means that you and the healer will be the primary target for any ranged attacks. This also means that you are going to be missing out on a majority of the AoE heals. So if you're facing a boss that deals out heavy party-wide damage, you should move closer to the melee DPS in order to benefit from the AoE healing spells. The same applies if you are a part of an all-ranged DPS group. While you might want to spread out and be far away from the rest of your other party members, it is less beneficial as your healer cannot use their full arsenal and are now having to move around constantly to heal everyone. I'm not really going to mention the melee DPS as you don't really have much of a choice in relocating and you will be right next to the tank. Bonus tip, practice. The more you play, the more you learn, the more you know, the better you will perform. You can't improve your gameplay until you're actively doing it. Build your knowledge by running the dungeons on heroic mode before jumping into mythics and jump into the LFR for your entry into the raids. And don't be discouraged if you make mistakes, even the pros make them. Bonus bonus tip. It can be a pain queuing for dungeons as a DPS, just because of how long it takes. Here's a cheat. When you start running mythics, just create your own group. If you've never done that before, I'm sure there is some anxiety with that decision, but just give it a shot. You'll have plenty of options with other DPS, but you will have healers and tanks queue up as well. Like seriously, it normally takes me about 7 minutes to get a mythic group together compared to 15 in trying to join a group that is already set up. I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? And so this video is at its end. I have tanking and healing videos just like this one. They should pop up on the screen now. If you like WoW and MMO content, then subscribe to the channel for more. Before leaving, please click that like button as it is the best way to support me for free. Feel free to check out my Patreon and YouTube memberships as well to see exclusive secret content. Links to everything are down below. Leave a comment with an extra tip or what you find the most helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Of course it didn't drop anything warrior demon hunters rip hunters that was this is actually a really good raid really solid the council is definitely the best